Hey guys, so this week what I'm working on is actual the back panel of the trunk, but one tricky part I gotta deal with is the air tank that I put in up here. Now it sits out past this flat area, so we've gotta make a piece at first that curves around it and up to seal it off from the trunk, then we can make the flat panel here. So it's gonna be a little tricky, but we're gonna figure it out. A uh, bunch of templates, and we'll get going on it. All right, let's get some poster board. Now what I've done is gotten a side profile of the straight area to curve the tank. Now we're gonna have to start off with a flat piece of sheet metal, go all the way across, and then try to roll this curve onto it so we can keep checking it on the side with this till we have it about right. Now there's framing up above but it's past the tank, so we gotta wrap all around the tank and tie into that framing, then come down and tie to the frame rails. So it's gonna be an interesting piece to make because I've never had a lot of luck with my roller, getting it adjusted right, things like that. So we're gonna give it a shot today and see if we can make this piece. Okay, now on this three-in-one roller, I've had some issues trying to keep it square when I'm actually rolling. So I took some time and looked over everything and it, you have an adjustment here for the bottom roller. This bottom roller stays stationary and you have an adjustment for the top roller. So now while I was trying to set the bottom roller, this stupid cover just keeps getting in the way. So I'm gonna take it off. Now I guess the cover was there so that when you're cutting and shearing and you're moving it, you don't put your hand on it, I guess. I don't know. But you couldn't get to these adjustments because the thing was, the cover was there. You'd have to close the cover, adjust it back forth. Well, I need to be able to see in there what's going on. So from what I can tell is I need to lower the bottom roller because if I don't get the top roller low enough, the gears don't grab. So we're gonna run these out. Okay, I've squared the sheet up in the roller and these two rollers on this side are holding it. Now, from what I can see, these two are gonna push it through the third roller, but how far we push it up is the how much it curves it. So we're gonna bring it up the meat first and then we'll start adjusting from there. Now, the bottom part of this has to be straight. So I've marked where I wanna stop so I don't roll the whole thing through it. I'm just going the equal amount of turns on each side. All right, there you have it. We've got the right curve. All right, not too shabby. Looks like it stayed somewhat square this time. So I think the main trick was measuring the adjustments on either side and keeping them exact so it didn't walk one way or the other. It's time consuming on this machine, but I think it's worth it in the long run to get a nice product. Okay, all I did is at the bottom, I folded a 90 on it and then sheared it off at one inch. So this is our piece. Now I know I have to make a second piece because I need it 33 and a quarter and the width of my roller was only 28. So I'm gonna have to make two pieces, seam it together. You're limited by your tools. So let's see how this one fits. That's how it's gonna look. Nice and covered up, ready to go. So now I'm gonna pull measurements over here and we're gonna go ahead and make the second piece and then we'll put them together before we put them in. All right. All right guys, so I just put a step in it or a flange in it so the two pieces can go together cleanly. Then we'll rivet it and we'll have the one piece go in. Now this piece is going on the far side and the air ram for the trunk is there. So we're gonna lay this up and cut it out so that way the whole thing will slide in. Now you might have noticed I'm back to using my bead roller manually. I built a new stand for it. I burn out the drill. So I'm working on some new power sources and hopefully I'll have one of those videos up soon. So let's fit this together and then we'll notch it. All 
All right, we got the piece completely made. Now we gotta try to fit this thing in there all in one piece. All right, so I've cut out the panel for the back. Now, we know the tank is nine and a half inches tall, so I've laid out this design here to give it a little something. And by bead rolling it, I'm actually gonna strengthen this panel too so it won't wobble. So now this is gonna be interesting doing this by myself and trying to run crank the roller. So let's hope it turns out good. Alright guys, well I got it done. It's not my best because it's really hard to crank and drive it through. I really wish I hadn't burned up that drill, but I'm definitely going to come up with another way to power this thing. That way I can get dead straight lines with it. But that and a guard and a table, it, it needs some work. But for right now, I'll make do with what I got. So I cut this a little over, so now I'm going to measure out, trim it down to the exact size I need. That way it's a good fit. All right guys, so look, I made that big piece with the bead rolling everything on it, put it in and I just did not like it. So I've decided to make this piece here out of three pieces. That way it has all the rivets around it and then the center piece will have flanges on either side to lay in there and then it'll all be riveted. I think it's gonna lock, look a lot better and yeah, I just think it's gonna look better. So gonna go this way with it now it's interesting putting this stuff on because I'm drilling it in to quarter inch steel so I'm gonna have to actually hand drill these now I punched all the sheet metal first but of course I only had like six rivets left so tomorrow I gotta run go get more rivets and then I can finish it up but for right now I'll go ahead and put it with a couple rivets to hold it in place All right, so on the back of the trunk, we have this divot here that I put in for when the tailgate folds, okay? So we need this clearance, but I wanna go ahead and make this a new piece too. So I'm gonna cut this out. We have a real jagged line here we use with the plasma. I'm gonna split it with the cutoff wheel to a nice clean line. Saw these off and then we'll put one piece of metal that comes up and curves through here. It'll look way cleaner. So it's gonna take a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting, but we'll get it done. All right, well that was quite the feat to make this piece. Um, I got the curve about right now. It still needs a little tweaking, but we'll do it as we put it in. Um, some of the bends are a little wavy, but we'll pull it in with the rivets. So, all right, here it goes. We'll get this in here and get it riveted down. Rock on! All 
All right, guys. Well, we got three major areas done this week. Now, I know I've got to put the little pieces on the edge of the curb, and I want to make a cover that goes over the hinges on the trunk. Um, so we probably got those two things, and then the inside of the trunk lids to clean up, and then should be moving on from the trunk. Um, I know we've been doing a lot of it, but hey, I, I want to make it right. So anyway guys well hope you enjoyed the video you got something out of it um, if you noticed this week I was using this blue four and a half inch grinder from Harbor Freight it was on sale for 14 bucks so I figured I'd give it a shot um, just as a spare I left my good ones over at my buddies when I was doing some fab work for them I gotta go pick them up so but in a pinch it it works i got through this job with it um i don't know how long it'll last but for 14 bucks oh well but anyway guys do me a favor like and subscribe you want to see some other videos over here and there's probably a link to patreon down here if you want to see some extras all right guys have a great week see you next week